This is Dave Tate here with Julia Ladowski. We're going to be speaking about the conditioning of children, namely the children between the ages of 6 and 13. This is going to be a uh, segment, so there's going to be more than one video. So you want to make sure to check out all segments because the last segment I'm going to ask her a critical question when it comes to the training of these children that I think you all should be made aware of and understand because it is going to be one of the most important things when it comes to working with these young athletes. We had the opportunity to have Julia come in last night and work with a small group of kids that myself, Matt Goodwin, and a couple other uh, Little League baseball coaches who help us out work with. And we had the very humbling experience of watching her work with these kids and Humbling is a, uh, probably the polite way of saying it because normally when we work with these kids, and we've been working with them for a while now, they are grabbing each other's asses. They are fighting with each other. They're not paying attention. They're not doing what we're asking them to do. They don't listen, and pretty much they're just being kids 6 to 13 years old. Well, after about the first five minutes of Julia working with them, myself and the other three coaches are looking at each other in disbelief because the kids are quiet. They're not grabbing each other's ass. They're doing exactly what they're told to do. And they were coaching each other, which <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. And they were doing things right. So I wanted to use this opportunity to talk to Julia a little bit about not only what we can do better, but some of the things that she saw with the kids that we were working with and the mistakes that they were making. So to start off with, the first question will be with the kids that we had, because there was, there was a diverse age difference. Mm -hmm. There was, I think, between 6 and I think it was 6 to 13. Mm -hmm. What were some of the things that stood out first? that you saw that they were doing incorrectly as far as mechanics and so forth? With that age group, a lot of what we see is basic coordination issues. Um, the younger kids tend to be a little bit more fluent. The older kids, because they've had a chance to be involved in sports and mess themselves up, so to speak, the coordination issues of just learning how to skip, knowing what position their body is supposed to be in, isn't, it, it's, it's messed up, the patterns are messed up. So that's really the biggest issue that I saw right away um, was getting them to learn how to move their bodies properly um, and know what position they're being. When I, st when I tell them to stand up straight with their arms at 90 degrees and stand still, a lot of them don't know where their arms are supposed to be. So a lot of it is just understanding the body positions, getting them in the right positions first, um, and then being able to just break each movement down piece by piece. Mm -hmm. To... Um to, to restate one thing that she said that we've noticed with these kids as well is the older the kids are, the worse, the worse they are. The younger kids don't have the hip mobility problems that w we typically see. When we first brought the kids out, the, the ones that were in the 12 to 13 year old group, I, I wanted to hit myself in the head with a bat because they couldn't even do a quarter squat without falling all over the place, but the younger ones didn't have the problem. Um, when you say they don't have the opportunity to, when they're younger, they haven't had the opportunity to mess themselves up yet, what do you think some of the components are that are messing the kids up? I think some of it is too, too much sport, not enough general physical preparedness. So they're out there playing baseball, they're out there playing football, they're out there doing all these sport activities, and... A lot of times the coaches, the sport coaches themselves don't either have the time or the knowledge to teach them properly, to warm up properly, to know what type of hip mobility they need to have to play their sport. So that stuff never gets addressed. So the older they get, the, the more they grow, the tighter the tendons and ligaments become, everything just gets bound up. And if they're not addressing those issues, they just get worse and worse. So by adding on all these sports, I asked those kids, what sports do you play? They all named at least three, four, three sports. Mm -hmm. Some of them played play four, and, and they play those all year round, but again, they're not addressing 
the foundations. They're not addressing the flexibility. They're not addressing the mobility. They're not addressing basic nervous system patterns that need to be addressed. And then the more they get involved in those sports, it just, it keeps compounding. And then they end up like what you guys saw on the very first day. Yeah. With, um, with the exercises, cause you did a lot of the same stuff that we were doing. So with you having them do the same things we were doing, what were we doing wrong as far as teaching them, as far as any of the different, so you, for instance, with the wall drill and mm -hmm. so forth, what did you see? Because when they, when they went to the wall to do the drill, they've done it many, many times before. Mm -hmm. What were they doing wrong that we can fix that we weren't doing right? A lot of it was just simple, simple body positions, getting them to, you know, keep their feet back so they're more in an angle. Um, when that knee drives up, a lot of them wanted to, and some of it is just because, again, they just don't know their body positions. They don't know that body awareness. A lot of them wanted to just have that leg, the foot, more towards the wall rather than keeping the, the leg tucked back because when you are accelerating, when you are leaning forward and accelerating, the leg actually has to drive back behind you. Mm -hmm. So getting them to, to drive the knee up but keeping the leg folded, keeping that calf to hamstring position so when the foot strikes the ground, they're driving backwards which propels them forward. So that was probably one of the biggest things. Other than that, a lot of them had a good knowledge of what position they were supposed to be in with the toe dorsiflexed, um, and then just getting them to learn how to, once they start driving that knee up, to, to be able to stay in that position and hold it. And some of that just comes from getting stronger. Okay. So. so what I can see that we are doing wrong is we are putting a very, very strong emphasis, which it wasn't bad, on the toe up position, but we weren't putting enough emphasis on the foot that was back as far as what position that needed. Right. Be. Make sure they're staying in that angle. Because a lot of times what happens if you have them switch feet, they'll start to creep in closer to the wall, and so now they're standing straight up. Mm -hmm. So if we're focusing on typical acceleration position, we want them to be able to maintain that angle, which is obviously going to strengthen their, their, you know, their back and their abs and, and their glutes. So getting them to hold that position is going to strengthen those areas so that when they are sprinting, they're strong enough to hold that position. So keeping that foot back and just trying to maintain that angle as much as possible will allow them to when they do go to sprint, they can, they can hold that position. All right, now with the basic, with the basic skipping, because a lot of that was, once again, the same, um, we have issues with, you know, toe position, foot position, and all that other kind of stuff. I don't know how to go about fixing that, except for the verbal cueings. How, how are you working on them to try to make sure that they were keeping their, their arms and their toes in the correct position? Um, with with kids that age, it's it's one piece at a time. How mm -hmm. long have you guys been working with them? A um, couple months. A couple months. So, I mean, even within a couple months, there's they're still only going to they're at the point where they're they still have to think about it to do it right. So, if you tell them to fix their arms, they're going to fix their arms and they're going to forget about their feet. Okay. So, focusing on one one thing at a time. So, one day or one week, you might just focus on making sure their arms are in position. Not that you don't care about the feet, but yeah. the focus, I mean, just like when you squat, the one thing at a time. Um, so for them, it's a lot of times if you, if you cue the kid to stay on the balls of the feet, that's going to automatically keep that toe up in position. Mm -hmm. um, so, and what we tell our kids is stay on the balls of the feet, not the tippy toes, because a lot of kids are going to want to run on their toes. They're going to want to run way up high, but not on the, ball, you know, not on the balls of the feet where where you're going to get the most force out of. So I tell the kids, stay on the balls of the feet uh, and keeping the arms in position moving from 90, which is what we were working on, is going to automatically drive the knees up. So I think if you, if you focus on those two things, arm position and staying on the balls of the feet, everything else should kind of fall into place. The, the knee ends up coming up, the hips end up staying in position, the body stand, tends to stay up, upright. So with kids that age, focus on those two points and then things will, I think everything else will fall into place after that. From, from my research, and now I, I'm going to back up for a minute and say this also depends upon the maturity of the kids because mm -hmm. kids mature at different rates. Right. That the physical skill of strength really doesn't even become a factor or should even be developed until they're 12, 13, 14 that other skill developments need to happen during other periods of their age development, mm -hmm. visual acuity, uh, coordination, balance, and right. so forth. Um, would, would you say that's a correct assessment? Because when I say my research, I'm going back 
quite a while. <laughs> you know, you're, you're up on this more than I am. Um, yeah, yes, I would. Um, with our young kids, you know, like you said, we usually start basic weight training, actual weight training with kids around the age of 12. Any younger than that, the strength that they're going to gain is going to come from the movements that we do. It's mm -hmm. going to come from, um, you know, prisoner squat, you know, our squats in the warm up and lunges in the warm up. So it's going to come from all of that. You know, you can teach kids push ups and you can have them do chin ups and flex arm hangs and things like that, but they're going to get stronger no matter what they do mm -hmm. at that point. So getting the basic motor patterns down and getting them to, like last night we finished up with holding a push-up position and getting them to understand that their hips can't be up, they need to be flat. And just by doing things like that, we have a lot of our kids do bear walks and crab walks and stuff that we did in gym class, which isn't, you know, strength training, yeah. but, it's, but it's, that's what's yeah. going to help them. That's what's going to help their balance. That's what's going to help build up the areas, the mobility, the strength in, in the areas where they're, when they hit 12 yeah. and 13 and 14, that they're, you know, everything's going to kind of catch up. Now, the way it was once explained to me was you can develop, you know, the weight room strength or, you know, maximal strength between the ages of 13 up until, well, who knows, 60 or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, phenomenal rates. It's really never going to slow down. But the rate at which you're going to develop your coordination and some of these other skills after a certain age period slows down a lot and may actually be impossible to develop any further. Right. Is that correct? I, I, I agree and I see it because our young kids, and you'll see it with these kids that you guys are working with, these young kids, they, they catch on quick. And if they, if it, the older they get, when we get kids that are 14, when we get kids that are 18, that don't know how to skip, that don't know how to squat, that don't know, how, don't know those motor patterns, it takes them a lot longer to pick up on it. It takes them, them a lot longer for it to become natural. Within two weeks, I can get an eight-year-old skipping properly just with basic motor patterns. A 16-year-old, it, it still is a conscious thing for them after three, four, five, six weeks. Um, and even some of the adults that we have coming in doing our, our speed training and conditioning stuff, it's even worse. Mm -hmm. They are at the point, I mean, we have 40 year old, you know, guys who come in and it's, it's even in a longer process than our high school kids. So I definitely agree that those nervous system patterns have to be started at a, at a young age, um, first and foremost, and then the strength comes later. So yeah, I absolutely agree that if you wait to, to develop that it's going to take a lot longer. So there definitely is development windows that are happening in there. I see it. I, yeah. I think so because I see it with the kids that we yeah. work with, yeah.